One, two, three. Hello and welcome to my channel Florist Batch. I'm Sandrine Mouji and in this video I'm going to show you how to paint the sunflower that you can see here on the thumbnail. In this first part I'm going to talk a little bit about the initial drawing and also about painting the shadows. This is the drawing in my sketchbook and you can see there the ink line that makes it easier to trace and all the little patches of colours where I've chosen the colours for the sunflower and where I've mixed my shadows and my greens. I'm going to skim over the drawing, the sketchbook, the transferring and the harmonic shadows because I'm going to film some other videos that are going to address this specifically. This is what the drawing looks like once it's been transferred to the watercolour paper, except that it's a little bit stronger. I would usually do it fainter than this, but if I do it as faint as I normally do, it wouldn't show on the video. So now let's move on to the painting of the shadows. I am using harmonic shadows to paint the shadows on the petals and the foliage which is a technique that involves making a grey mix with three primary colours that will be in a final subject. So you need to find a yellow, a red and a blue that will be in a final subject and these three together will mix a neutral grey that will never clash with the final painting. So in this particular instance I've used Permanent Yellow by De La Rani, which I think is the brightest yellow in the sunflower. For my red, I've used Perilene Violet, which is a reddish maroon violet. And for the blue, I've used Windsor Blue Red Shade. When working wet in wet, it's very important that as you work your way through your subject, you wait until any area surrounding it is dry before you paint any petals or any leaf. Because with that much water, if you go in with a really wet brush and the surrounding area is wet it's all going to merge into one big mess and you won't be able to recover that to give definition to your painting. So I'm working my way around the flower, usually working every other petal and then going round again. I moved my palette so that you could see the consistency of the paint. In the main well where I mix the three primary colours together it's very dark, quite intense grey. And then I picked some from that and diluted it in the well in the middle so that it wouldn't be too strong. The shadow mix is the same all over the painting, but when you put your shadows down, you have to keep in mind the color that you that is going to go over the shadows. So if I paint a yellow petal, I want the shadows to be quite pale on that, strong enough to show through the layers of yellow but not that strong that my yellows are going to look dirty and too grey. So same mix but quite diluted. However, when I get to paint the foliage, the foliage is green and quite dark green in some places. And if I painted my shadows on there as light as I did on my petals, it wouldn't show through the green layers on top of it. So when I get to paint the shadows on the foliage, it has to be darker, it has to be deeper than I do on the petals. Now I'm going to accelerate a little bit, not the painting but at least the filming, so that it takes a little bit less time than the actual painting. When I do a painting like this it takes me days to finish it. So by accelerating the film you can still see everything I'm doing but a little bit quicker than I would actually do it. So you see on this I'm strengthening the shadows on the foliage, adding some stronger shadows behind there. That leaf at the back there that I was doing now is right in the background so I want to keep it a bit more dreamy, it won't be as defined as the rest of the foliage. And here I'm going really dark, it's on the stem but it's behind all the petals, the sepals, the foliage, it's right deep inside there so it has to be a little bit darker than the rest and you can see straight away it adds some depth to the painting. 
Now this petal I'm doing now is not as dark. It's got quite a lot of shadow on it because it's got some cast shadows from the other one, but not quite as much. Now I've slowed the film down again because I would like to show you more in detail how to paint the shadows on the leaf. So I'm putting the water down. You can see from that that it's a lot of water. When I say I'm painting wet and wet, I'm not joking. I'm really painting very, very wet. You can see the size of the brush. I'm not sure how much it is that one. I think it's a number 10 or 12. And I keep on going back to the water pot and adding more water and adding more water until it's really, really soaking wet. When I paint foliage, I tend to do half a leaf at a time to break down the area that I'm going to paint as much as possible. But on this one, I decided to go for the whole leaf which allows me to keep it looser for longer and because there's cast shadows all over it the leaf doesn't really show any separation between one side and the other. I like to keep my painting process as wet in wet and as loose as I can for as long as I can and then right at the end I can go in with some detail but wet in wet loose watercolour is really what I like to play with and it gives a very soft finish on the washes. You can see the stem here now that it has dried. Even on the ridges which I painted wet in wet as well, you can definitely see them but they don't have any hard edges. The only hard edges are on the edges of the petals, on the edges of the veins but in any area like the stem or the leaf or there's no hard edges it's all soft washes and I think it gives a more natural look to your subject. In the description box below I'm going to give you exactly what colours, the name of the colours I've used and also the equivalent in Daniel Smith. If you're watching this in America you might be using Daniel Smith colours and sometimes they have a different name from the ones by Windsor and Newton and Dale Rani. I am adding some serious shadows here. You can see how intense that is. I actually really like doing this when I do workshops, when I teach and, and I demonstrate in front of people and when I go as dark as this and it goes completely out of control you know, with, with the black spreading everywhere. It's still my grey shadow mix but I've gone really seriously dark with it so that it would show through the dark green. And when I do this I can literally hear people around me going <gasps> I can hear them gasping, thinking, oh my gosh, she just ruined her painting. I haven't ruined my painting, it's just at some point you have to go for it. And if I wasn't to do this, I would end up having to do three, four layers of shadows. And I want to do only one, so I need to do it strongly enough that it will show through the dark green. So don't hesitate, just go for it. And remember that as long as it's wet, you can still lift some, don't, don't let it dry, but as long as it's as wet as this, you can see here how wet it is, I can easily lift some paint. Once it's dry it's a bit more problematic because you have to scrub your paper and the paper doesn't like to be scrubbed and then you end up with a surface that's not as smooth as it was before and it shows and once it starts showing damage there's not much you can do to recover it, you pretty much have to start again. But you see now it's blending in the water, it doesn't look as dark as it was when I first put it down and I'm doing the serrations here, I'm doing some veins just giving a slight direction to my washes before they start to dry and then I wipe my brush on a damp cloth and I just go along the veins again to sort of smooth down some of the feathering that happens. You know when you put a very strong colour down in water it start doing that feathering, spreading a bit unevenly along the bits that you would like to be a bit smoother, like the veins or the edges. So you can sort of channel it without really lifting it, but just teasing it in the right direction so that it follows your texture. Now I'm going to keep on lifting some veins, with still with quite a big brush, but just using the point of it. And what I'm doing here as well is that I'm, by, what, by lifting in the dark bit, I can actually drag some of that dark paint over the highlights. So I'm lifting a vein through the shadow, but I'm extending it into the highlight. So I've got a line which is light over the shadow, but darker over the highlight. Here I'm just drawing a vein, again by dragging some color 
and then smoothing it over. There we go. So it's a bit more delicate. And here I'm using a flat brush. So this is a flat brush which is very, it's a synthetic, it's a very low quality brush because the worse the quality, the sharper it's going to be because the bristles are basically stiffer if it's a low quality synthetic brush. And I'm using it on its side to drag through the paint and that just lifts that little bit more than a round brush would. So when I want a bit of a stronger vein, you can see I'm putting it on its side and you see as I drag it, that it's lifting a lot of paint. The paint is still wet there, it hasn't started to dry yet, I used plenty of water to make sure it wouldn't start drying on me before I was finished. And now we're ready to accelerate again. I'm going to move on to some leaves at the back there and going all around really, like I did with the petals but this time with the leaves, and going quite dark again. You can see when you start to add some dark behind these petals, they really come forward. So think about this when you design your painting, when you do your drawing. Try to add some dark bits all around and it really frames your subject. Rather than just having all these yellow petals, which are going to be not that strong, cut to white, then you have all these dark greens behind them and it, it really frames it and adds quite a lot of depth. Now we're going to the middle. At the center of the sunflower is almost black, so you, you can't hesitate. You have to go really, really strong with the black. It's still wet and wet, there's still water there, but the wash I'm adding to it is not very diluted at all. It's still very dark. And there we go, that's your sunflower. All done with the shadows, and now we're ready to move on to the color parts, the fun bit. So I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you in the second part of the sunflower painting the petals. See you later. Bye.